Greetings, humans. You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I am one of your hosts today, Jimmy Wong. I'm your other host, Jake. Boss. Jake Boss. I was hoping you would drop the last name because it's so cool. Uh, we're both J with cool last names, right? Yeah, Our name's Poppin' Lights. It's great. <laughs> Jake <laughs> Boss. There you go. Bling. Bling. Yeah, exactly. Uh, today we are doing something very exciting. We are doing one of my favorite episodes to do. It's the pre-con upgrades. Yeah, these things are always awesome, especially these decks yeah. uh, that are tied to the sets now. They're super thematic, and uh, I'm loving these lately. And they're built pretty darn well. That's the thing that I think all of us here at the office have been pretty pleased by. Yeah, for sure. Like Because we have to go through these decks for this episode. Yep. And it's like, well, I don't want to cut that because that's too good. <laughs> yeah, and it's nice because when we do the exercise, which is 10 cards added in and 10 cards out, we want to focus on adding stuff that's thematic and awesome and makes the deck work better, not just cards that are like, well, here's some ramp, here's some card draw. Although when you can combine both of them, it's an extra special fun time. So today we are doing the Spirits Squadron deck. This is a blue-white Spirits deck. Spirits, obviously, a very big part of Innistrad and a very big theme in general. But before we get into it, we have to mention our sponsors, channelfireball.com slash command. You can type that into your URL and be on the store in the marketplace, or you can use code command at checkout. Buy some magic cards. You know you're going to anyway, especially if you are looking to pick up a deck like this, upgrade it yourself with some cards that we mentioned or maybe some cards that you think about. And of course, you're also supporting local game stores because those are the ones on the Channel Fireball marketplace when you go decide to buy there. You're also supporting our show here at the Command Zone Podcast and everything that we do. So get the cards you're already going to get, support the shows that you love, both here and the local game stores on the Channel Fireball Marketplace at channelfireball.com slash command or use promo code command to check out. Also check out Ultra Pro while you're there, while you're at your local game store. Ultra Pro is the product that we have been using for many years, decades for me at this point to protect my own cards with the sleeves, the inner sleeves, the deck boxes, the satin towers. I still have I satin, love towers. satin towers. When I first started playing Magic again seven years ago, the satin tower was like literally the first thing I bought and that thing is rock solid. I've got like 10 of them in my backpack every single day. I know you got a whole rainbow. Yeah. It looks nice, right? Here, Arthur, you'll show the beautiful <laughs> array of all my commander decks right here yeah satin I, towers i especially love the product shots that we do before game nights because it really shows off how beautiful the products are they're well made manufactured ultra pro's been doing it for a long long time so you right. know you're getting good quality there and finally last week support the show is directly at patreon.com slash command zone we shout out one lucky patron every episode and this episode is dedicated to greg, greg arledge greg you rock. You do You do rock. Okay, Spirit Squadron, great name for a pre-con deck. Uh, this is an Azorius deck, and the rules, as always, 10 cards in, 10 cards out, with a total budget of around $30, and we almost always leave the mana base as is, because that's just not as interesting to upgrade, right, Jake? Yeah, and a deck like this with uh, Spirits as your tribe, Spirits are everywhere in Magic, so you oh, have yeah. so many options uh, at a pretty good budget, too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it's nice. The more a type of tribe is printed the more things are available the more it's been reprinted over the history of magic so we got some good options here that's right so let's talk first about the new cards the new commander cards that are in this deck very interesting so there are four total legendary creatures the first is the lead singer as we like to say so jake do you want to lead off and read us yeah millicent millicent restless revenant uh she's five a white and a blue she's a legendary creature spirit soldier this spell costs one less to cast for each spirit you control so that seven cmc ain't so bad and she's a four for a flyer with when Millicent Restless Revenant or another non-token spirit you control dies or deals combat damage to a player, you create a 1-1 white spirit with flying. Wow. And that's a 4-4 four, four on the card. Now, this isn't just a 7 mana value commander because there is a chance... You can cast it for white and blue. Just for two sure. mana. Yeah. If which, you don't have spirits out in this deck, I don't know what you're doing. You know? <laughs> yeah. So there's no way you're ever paying a full seven, I think, for Millicent. And, and if Millicent dies, the spirits you have also go against the commander tax. Yeah, exactly. So, and we like our spirits dying as well because they mm -hmm. make more for that recast of Millicent and board wipes. And yeah. this card is just overall really, really solid. Yeah, actually, it's it's surprising. You would think seven mana, mana valley commander, ah, oh, that's too expensive. But the fact that it goes against the commander tax and also this trigger when millicent dies you make a spirit so that's already a one mana reduction right. the next time you need to recast it when it deals combat damage you make even more spirits and if you swing according to the text here with multiple creatures they all do combat damage you're making a bunch of spirits 
Yeah, this thing, I think, uh, performs really well. And if you're paying seven mana at any point, you've done something wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, only if it's like the eighth time you've cast it, Millicent. How about that? <laughs> for sure. And if you're at that point already, like, I bet you this game's close yeah. to over any hoop. Or everyone wants it to end because right. everyone's tearing <laughs> their hair out. Um, yeah, I like this commander a lot. Really resilient to board wipes just by the fact that when it dies, you make a 1-1 white spirit creature token. So if you have a huge board, all your spirits die. Boom, you make a bunch of spirits and then bam, Millicent costs just white blue probably the next time you want to cast her. Yeah, what I like about this card is that it doesn't do something uh, in particular that is like super specific. So mm. if you're making a lot of spirit tokens, you're going to want to uh, be dealing combat damage. So this is an easy commander to switch out for maybe one of these other commanders too. Oh, yeah. And you might not feel it as much if you're yeah. feeling a little bit spicy on one of these days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Lots of options again in white and blue. Millicent could just be a player in the deck itself, but it's good to know. Uh, now the other new commander is actually a mono blue commander, but it's one of the new legendary creatures it's Donal, Herald of Wings. Two blue blue for a 3-3 legendary creature, Human Wizard. Whenever you cast a non-legendary creature spell with flying, you may copy it. Except the copy is a 1-1 spirit in addition to its other types. Do this only once each turn. And then the copy becomes a token. So very importantly, you're not creating a token, you're casting a spell and then you're copying that spell so you have another copy of the spell on the sack. Except this time it enters as a 1-1 spirit in addition to its other types. I like this a lot. Now it has yeah. to have flying on it. So that doesn't mean it means it, it might not be a spirit. It could be like a bird, but it becomes a spirit. So then that ties into the other cards in the deck. Um, and it's cool because you can do this once each turn. Yeah. And in, in this uh, deck in particular, we've seen a lot of spirits that have flash. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not unprecedented for you to be casting a creature spell on another player's turn. Yeah. Uh, it is going to be mana intensive for sure. And it's not something you'll probably be able to do reliably, but uh, the ability to create a token copy of something mm -hmm. uh there are a lot of ways to abuse that i'm a connoisseur of bruticlad decks and <laughs> yeah anytime something makes me a uh, copy of a creature spell i'm, I'm you're in, in for it yeah blue's, in blue's seen a lot of this recently so i think you don't play donald if you're playing it until later on when you have more than four mana available you play donald hold up your mana pass the turn next turn you flash in the spirit maybe flash in another one you've got way more power and toughness uh just thanks to that and more creatures and it turns some cards into spirits too right the final two commander potentials are actually a partner with pairing, and this is something that we see in both of the new precon decks. So partner with means cards that when you play it, it specifically says partner with another card, and then if it's in your deck, you can search your library for it and have it come out, or you can have both of them as your commander. The partner with commanders do not work with other cards that say partner on them. They are very specifically tied to the card that they are partnered with. And so if I cast one of these commanders, let's say I cast Rota, mm -hmm. then I'm going to, if it's in my 99, I can mm -hmm go fetch the other copy because of that partner with yep has to be in your library ability. so if you milled it then no luck there but right. these cards technically sort of say draw a card on them it just happens to be a very specific card yeah draw a really super synergistic card yeah yeah so let's read off both of them the first is rhoda geist avenger so rhoda is a three uh legendary creature human soldier costs three and a white uh partners with timon and has vigilance it's a three three whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped if it isn't being declared as an attacker put a 1-1 one, one counter on Rhoda. Oh, okay. So if you have a mana dork and you're tapping it for mana, that's a creature being tapped not for attacking. Rhoda gets bigger. If In this color combination, I think being able to control the board might help you a little bit with mm -hmm. this. It's just tough for me to look at a four mana vigilance attacky thing that grows and gets super excited. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, with yeah. the other commander, I don't know. Yeah, so if you decide to make this the lead singers of the deck, then you have Timon, Youthful Geist, which is four in the blue for a 3-4 legendary creature spirit so this one's a spirit the other one isn't it partners with rhoda the this creature has flying and it says at the beginning of each combat tap up to one target creature okay that's pretty darn good that each is combat. good right so this is a four mana commander into a five mana commander you play rhoda you play tim and, and then you pass the turn in each combat including your own you get to tap down a creature that you don't control actually no one target creature could be any creature uh, however rhoda cares about opponents creatures and so technically you could potentially get up to four plus one plus one counters on rhoda by the time it gets back to your turn that vigilance on rhoda suddenly becomes a lot more appealing yeah and i think Either of these commanders on their own aren't very exciting, especially for their mana cost. Mm -hmm. But together, 
I don't know. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. And uh, Jamie, our, uh, one of the staff writers here, was talking about a new emerging theme in Blue and White and just magic in general, which is, hey, I want to tap down other things. And then when they tap down, I get an additional benefit out of it. Yeah. So we see that there's actually a card in this deck called Verity Circle that plays specifically into this. But it seems like that's the most important part of the Rhoda Tim pairing is that they have the ability to do that. It's kind of a cool way to remove something without it being such a feel bad that you shut down the rest of the right. table. Right, yeah. Just tapping it down means you're getting it out of combat, but it's really useful if your opponent has like an Ulamog right. or a creature with Annihilator out, as we have seen now with a prior extra turns um, <laughs> that we've both been in. <laughs> yeah, I kind of Annihilator 10 to my opponent. It was it was nasty. Yeah, anything above two is pretty nasty in general. Okay, uh, those are the new commander options in the deck. Uh, one of them is a mono blue commander, so it can't be the lead singer, so it would be a decision if you're running this or buying this pre-con between Millicent and then Rhoda and Timon. So let's keep going and diving deeper into this deck with one of our favorite sections on the show. It is the stats. <laughs> okay, so we went through the deck and we have gone through all of the important aspects of it and we have listed out what cards do what and counted it up and here it is for you today. So the ramp in this deck, we count 10 pieces of unique ramp which is pretty good. That feels good. We're in white and blue. It's we don't it, have rampant growths. It, it, some of it could be better. Yeah. But the stuff that's not that great comes in tapped, but produces colored mana mm -hmm. so that you can make an argument for it. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. Yeah, there's a, the diamond in there. There are uh, just your regular signet type things. A lot of it's obviously artifact based because white and blue doesn't have access to much else, but it hits 10, which we think is right. That's that sweet spot for, uh, for commander decks. Now, keep in mind that ramp is maybe not as important in this deck because our commander of Millicent, if we choose to go with that one, doesn't really care so much about the high mana value. Actually, you might be casting it for cheap a lot of times. Yeah, you kind of want to get started on your plan a little bit earlier than maybe developing your board, which sounds crazy. Yeah, instead of but playing... getting a, a spirit out will ramp you if you plan on casting that commander. Yeah, playing a rock on three or a spirit. And I think in a lot of cases, you might actually opt for the spirit right. unless you can use the rock to like play two spells next turn. Um, card draw. Eight and ten cards, actually, if you count clues. I don't know. How do you feel about <laughs> counting clues? Does that make you feel good? I don't know if I count clues. I'd rather investigate them. But yeah, I think <laughs> clues is, it's right on that mark, right? Where some people will say, hey, if you scry once five times, you've kind of like drawn two cards almost. It's like, right, clues kind of feel like that. Where one, something that makes a clue token, that's not a full like card draw slot. But if you make three or four of them and you have the man to crack them, then that maybe counts towards one, maybe a little more than one. So but you know what feels way better is assuredly drawing cards. <laughs> yeah. Like, how about we just get something that says draw a card? And call yeah. It and, and we'll find, you know, in the deck that a lot of them are actually kind of conditional. So the card draw is a little suspect. It looks nice on the number side, but you have to look a little deeper to understand that, oh, maybe it's not as great as we thought. Um, single target removal five spots of that which is pretty, pretty nice good. yeah pretty good um one thing i did notice though is that some of it is enchantment based so mm -hmm. if that enchantment disappears so does the quote unquote removal so it's not permanent removal there are some instances of that but it's not fully permanent removal and then board wipes we got four of them in here uh, and of course we don't mind a board wipe in this deck oh definitely not especially if millicent is out and then your board wipe just gives you more creature tokens pretty good now, when it comes to the actual deck itself, we have quite a lot of spirit and spirit synergy. How many cards did we count here, Jake? 36. Wowie, Ooh. zowie. <laughs> that is a ton. Definitely plenty to borrow from if you need to up those stats a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That That is the, you know, I think normally we're like, you can have between 20 and 25-ish cards that are around the main theme of the deck. But this is a spirit deck through and through. The commander says that. Uh, so 36 total cards that have something to do with spirits or spirit synergy or are spirits themselves. Um, so that's obviously the main part of the deck. And then investigate, something that we're seeing coming back uh, uh, quite often it seems like a an evergreen type of thing that's happening with magic now yeah i want to talk about investigate for a second because yeah. they make these uh let's say uh clue tokens food tokens and blood tokens maybe even rocks too treasures, when you look at yeah. uh well, well treasures these are treasures are solid yeah they're very but when solid. you look at these tokens that are maybe not that great mm -hmm. um they can become better things. As I said, I'm a big Brutaclad player, but right. you've also seen uh, Josh utilize them very well on game nights. Mm -hmm. If you just have a ton of artifacts out, you can do stuff with these artifacts. So when Magic gives you uh, artifacts for a cheap price, don't you know slouch on a spell that might be like uh, Confirm Suspicions, ah. where it's counter target spell, investigate three, three times. times. 
who knows what you could do with those clues who knows so. yeah you might even solve a mystery yeah. um but yeah, <laughs> yeah we have we, <laughs> oh my goodness we did it we said beetlejuice three times uh there's like gear per ether grid there right. are uh cards that allow you to convoke out cards with your artifacts as well so yeah there there are definitely more ways to use it and i keep mentioning this card academy manufacturer which oh, allows yeah. you to make a lot of artifacts at the end of the day and of course there are cards that allow you to sacrifice them as well okay so one of the more interesting parts of these deck breakdowns is we talk about the value of the decks because we're all tr we're all collectors out there right to some degree and when you buy these decks well we want to actually find out are we getting a good deal are we getting cards that are worth it that we can add to our collection should we decide to tear it down and take it apart so we of course calculate the value and we take into account the value of the reprints and not the new cards because we don't actually know where those will settle right. sometimes those cards can be like i don't know teferi's protection or i don't know uh dockside <laughs> extortionist <laughs> Sometimes they can't be. So we talk about the value of the reprints, which there are 62 in this deck. And the prices that we take are prior to the deck reveal, so they will have dipped a little bit. And the total reprint value is... Fifty-six dollars and six cents. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. And yeah. of course, these numbers, all oh, you might say, hey, they're higher than the actual retail price of the deck. But a lot of the times, it's a lot of cards that are like ten cents, twenty cents that add up. And we've actually seen that the average pre-con reprint value of the past three years averages around to much higher, right. between eighty and ninety dollars. So this is definitely much more on the low side here, which is a little disappointing. Yeah, I think the number itself might be a little bit deceiving, though, because you have to take into account with any pre-con the cost of acquisition for these. Cards cards you don't have to put any time into tracking down all the spirits and True. building this deck yourself if you're looking for something that's nice and thematic that you can crank up uh on your own say you're trying to get a friend into magic or something yeah this is still a great option because the deck works really well yeah and like you said before spirits are a really popular tribe so that means that you don't have as many juicy reprint targets you know if this was like right. the praetor set and it's like oh yeah give me right. an elish nor and give me a vorinclex or that well not vorinclex <laughs> don't i'm sorry i said that card name don't play that Jared card for jerks jerk card for jerks uh so let's talk about the notable reprints so all the cards that are worth more than two dollars so they we found that there are three cards that are worth five dollars or more and then one two three four five six about 11 cards that are worth two dollars or more so that's again part of the reason why the reprint value is so low but there are some good cards in here yeah they kind of spread the love a little bit in mm -hmm. this deck uh first off is kami of the crescent moon is five dollars and fifty cents wow uh always fun drawn more cards uh fell the mighty which is five dollars nice board wipe very good board wipe in this deck because it's destroy all creatures with power greater than target creatures power definitely you got a bunch of one ones yeah so we're going to be keeping our board and probably getting rid of a bunch of those non-tokens yep uh and then hallowed spirit keeper five bucks yeah this all is right. an interesting card i i've seen this a lot but i've never actually played it because it isn't that great to be honest i hate playing something that's says it doesn't do anything this turn right you know? if right. we're not doing something this turn i'm not into it yeah but. and what if someone gets rid of your graveyard then that card looks real bad right um, guys of saint traff classic classic yeah and the card that a lot of people are talking about because there's a card that's very similar to the invocation of saint traff in the set uh kaiser saint traff is a spirit and makes cool angel creature tokens when it attacks yeah it's always solid yeah it could also just be a replacement commander if you want it to be very easily exactly um you've got benevolent offering one of those cool cards where you get to offer an opponent a something and you gain some life get some spirits as well and this card was about a little bit over two dollars ghostly prison now this yeah. card is just it's like soul ring almost you, you can't you, have enough in your you collection. can't have enough you see this printed very often and reprinted a bunch and it still holds its value which says a lot about the quality of the card right stopping people from attacking you for each creature they control that's that's very very powerful one of my favorite pieces of removal ever, Swords of Plowshares, is in this deck, thank With goodness. With brand new art, too. With brand new art, yeah. We're it's looking at old art on my phone, but the new art is great. Actually, I love that part about the reprints. Ghostly Prison has new art as well, yeah. so does Swords of Plowshares. So that's always cool, too, if you're a collector, to get a pre-con for like, these special little pieces everywhere. Or if you produce a gameplay show about magic, <laughs> you're always excited about new art for cards. Yeah, exactly. New opportunities. Yeah, you're like, hmm, which one can we choose from yeah. this time? Oh, <laughs> this let's see this one. I love an idea for that. Uh, and then Twilight Drover, uh, just another really fun card that lets you pump out a bunch of white spirit tokens and likes tokens leaving the battlefield, importantly. That's at $2. And Windborn Muse, very similar to Ghostly Prison, but on a creature. On a spirit creature. On a spirit. Actually, that's a good point. I didn't even realize that Windborn Muse was a spirit. Yeah. Until I saw it recently. Perfect include for this deck. All right. So the big question that we have now, of course, is what 
should you run as the commander? We have two choices. We have Millicent, Restless Revenant, and then we have the partner with pairing of Rhoda, Geist Avenger, and Timon, Youthful Geist. Uh, I'm pretty set on this one. I'm pretty sure it's got to be Millicent. What do you think? Yeah, I think definitely, especially when you bring up the partner with mm -hmm. idea. If you draw one of Rhoda or Timon, then you can just go get the other one. Yeah, um, You're drawing cards. It's better to have them in the 99. Yeah, and what they're trying to do is tap down other people's creatures. And right. the deck has, like, I think one card that really synergizes with that whereas the rest of the deck is all about spirit yeah and millicent so, is a very good spirit coming yeah she's a, she's a good spirit like a good dog yeah she's got millicent a good is here. all right let's talk about the best cards in the deck and there are i wrote down four ish five of them but to me one of the best cards i think by far is donald herald of oh, wings yeah. we talked about this card already this just makes all of your creature spells with flying which by the way are all of them in your deck you get to have another one that means another spirit, yeah. another this is inner a battlefield ability. Yeah. Imagine putting this out with like a fairy artisans or something Ooh, like that. Like, yeah. Ugh, it's so good. Yeah. And not to mention you have cards like distant melody in the deck, which is all about drawing cards for a specific card type, creature type. So bam, look at that. Just spirits on spirits. Oh yeah. Um, a brand new card that is really exciting. I thought is pretty cool. It's called yeah. Haunted Library. Haunted Library is one in a white. It's an enchantment. And whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you may pay one. If you do create a one, one spirit. Woo! So that's pretty good. That is really good. Um, creatures will be dying on the battlefield. Paying one mana to get a 1-1 one, one flying token that also synergizes with the rest of your deck seems pretty good. Uh, this is pretty good when the board wipe happens as well. You play a board wipe and then any extra mana you have, you get more 1-1 one, one spirit creature tokens. Yeah, we love it. It's uh, Death triggers are something that you see when people are on their strategy. Yeah. It's not just uh, when a combat goes bad for somebody. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that are sack this, get that. So yeah. we're going to see it a lot. This doesn't say non-token creature either. So this is going to oh, presumably trigger a lot during a game. It's opponent's creatures, but in most metas, they're going to be pretty creature heavy. So this is going to do work, I think. Yep. Another card that I think is just probably the best card in the deck it's mirror entity oh yeah it's a classic two in a white shapeshifter with changeling so it's all creature types at all times but you can pay x and until end of turn creatures you control have base power and toughness xx and gain all creature types that's a finisher so, that is a finisher you're making a bunch of one ones pay five mana into mirror entity they're all five fives yeah and if they weren't spirits before oh they are now under under no circumstances can this card come out of the deck it's so perfect for the strategy yeah and i'll say almost always mirror entity is a remove on site card which yeah. lets you know that it is very powerful this is the kind of card you want to save your mana up for play it activate it win the game on the spot even if you don't know what your opponent is up to like, yeah you see it the game is over yeah yeah exactly and then two other cards i thought were the best cards in the deck would be the woodborne muse or the ghostly prison effects because your strategy in this deck i'm pretty sure is just turning flying creatures side ways which means that you're leaving yourself open for attack right and if that's the case you want to stop people from attacking you instead you don't want to be like oh well i have to hold back five spirits to stop these creatures from hitting me it just is better if you tax people to try and do it and then they're very often if you have ghostly prison out they'll just go somewhere else yeah it, it two mana doesn't seem like a lot especially when you're trying to police the board but when you have two other options who you can attack for free yeah. you're definitely going those directions i definitely like that a lot do you have any decks that are similar to this spirit squadron deck in your current collection oh 100 percent uh like <laughs> i said i'm a major brutaclad player so anything that makes a ton of creatures uh or tokens i really believe uh we can get up to some nastiness here yeah uh, i've got some of those cards uh to add to this deck for sure so very exciting and that is what we will be doing adding 10 cards taking 10 out the most exciting part of the episode is just around the corner but before we get there let's hear a message from our mid-roll sponsors ah ravnica is beautiful in the morning ah fire holy literal smokes chandra ah sorry jace i saw a spider and overreacted i've just been feeling frazzled lately hey you're a mind sculptor wanna fix up my brain i'm more of a destroy all your memories mind sculptor but for mental fitness you need better sleep that's why I use Calm. Calm is the number one app for sleep and meditation. And now they've teamed up with LeBron James, who I'm told is a king on his plane. Oh, wow. The mind is a muscle worth training and sleep is a critical part of that. So Calm gives you access to nature scenes, sleep stories, and meditations to help you sleep better and reduce stress. That way you're ready to face anything from all powerful dragon gods to small harmless spiders. And if you go to calm.com slash command, you can get 40% off your premium subscription. And with King James involved, it's a slam dunk! What's a slam dunk? Something good, I think. 
Again, for a limited time, our listeners can join LeBron in using Calm and get a 40% discount on a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash command. Unlock content to help you focus, ease stress, and sleep better. Get started at calm.com slash command. That's calm.com slash command. La, 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 la. Oh my, who have we here? I'm Rubinia's soul singer. Have you come to hear my music? I offer only one song, and it will cost you your eternal soul. <laughs> If I'm being entirely honest, I know it's not that great of a deal. Of course, there's always Amazon Music. They have thousands of music stations and top playlists to stream for free. They even offer over 10 million free podcasts, with some available weeks early, like the hilarious Smartless and Dr. Death Miracle Man, which is full of that true crime you humans love. And if, like me, you wish to play any song you desire, free of pesky ads, there's Amazon Music Unlimited, which grants access to over 75 5,000 songs anywhere. Plus, when I wish to change songs, I merely order my robo-servant Alexa to change them for me, which apparently you normal people are also allowed to do. Not bad for getting to keep your soul. If you've never tried Amazon Music Unlimited, now's a great time. For a limited time, new customers can try Amazon Music Unlimited free for three months, no credit card required. Just go to amazon.com slash command pod. That's amazon.com slash command pod to try Amazon Music Unlimited free for three months. Again, amazon.com slash command pod. Renews automatically, cancel anytime, terms apply. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Check out betterhelp.com slash command zone. Hey Josh, what you working on? Uh, just tweaking my rune deck. It's been feeling a little clunky. You know, as Commander players, we put a lot of effort into our decks, but we don't always spend enough time working on our own well-being. Yeah, and let's be honest, that's often a lot harder than just switching out a few cards. Which is why we want to tell you about BetterHelp. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. And BetterHelp is available worldwide. They have specialists for a huge range of issues. Anger, grief, anxiety, stress, and many more. I've been seeing a therapist for two years now. We want you to start living a happier life today. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised at what you might gain from it. See if it's for you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Command Zone listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash command zone. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash command zone. All right, we are back talking about the Spirit Squadron's deck, and here's the uh, the part of the episode where Jake was tasked to take 10 cards to find put in with a budget of around $30, and then take 10 cards out of the deck to improve it. So, one of my That's favorite right, things to Jimmy. do. That's right, Jimmy. That's right. It's one of my favorite things to do, especially if you're introducing new players to the game. It's just such a wonderful way to get people in and show them how to upgrade the deck for the first time. That's like one of my most satisfying parts of playing Commander, I think. Yeah, I, I love this task because it always makes you uh, dig deep into the wells of magic mm-hmm. and get creative uh, because we have to balance out like, yeah, you're definitely going to want this card that's a little bit more expensive, right? but they're solid Worth cards it. for like pennies Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that yeah. go perfect in this deck. All right, so let's start it off. Let's kick it off with the cards to add. There are 10 of them. We're going to go through each of them and explain our reasoning. Or Jake, you're going to explain your reasoning, and I'm going to back you up. So <laughs> He's going to make me seem really smart. Yeah, exactly. I totally think so. All right, so let's kick it off. number one <laughs> is Kami of False Hope. It's $1.20. Kami of False Hope is a one-mana spirit. Sacrifice Kami of false, of false Hope to prevent all common damage that would be dealt this turn. Ooh. It's a fog frog. It's a fog frog, but it's a spirit... I don't know. I, I can't come up. It's with a non-token spirit that's dying. That's right. It's going to Th- trigger our commander. We love that. There are. It's going to trigger your commander. It's going to trigger a bunch of other things that care about things dying. And when it deals combat damage, now a lot of spirits are flying, and this one isn't. But I think having a fog on a stick right. is so incredibly important in games. And uh, on turn one, this is a really solid turn one play because mm-hmm. I don't think any of our ramp apart from Soul Ring is going to be one mana. You're right. There's really not much in this deck that you're trying to do on turn one. Yeah, that's a good point actually. If you have this in your opening hand and you have a white mana to cast it with, this is kind of like casting a mana rock but specifically for your commander right because every this comes action up. you take will get that commander out one turn earlier that's right yeah uh, again uh, millicent starts at seven mana you cast this all of a sudden millicent costs six mana and it's turn two and maybe you can keep going from there so i like this a lot there have been so many situations too at a table where i'm about to swing out go to combat and i see a fog effect or a fog frog and i go well you're not going to do that right if I don't swing at you. And they go, yeah, of course not. I'm like, great. Going at someone else now. Right. Because why would you just waste your entire turn? Yeah, exactly. On- and tap out, too, to do right. so. 
So I like this a lot. Really good addition. And it's a spirit. Yeah. The next up is March of Souls. Four in the white for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. For each creature destroyed this way, its controller creates a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. And that pairs so well with Millicent's ability too, Mm -hmm. where she's going to fill up the board with spirits as well. I think you can probably wipe this board and recast Millicent in the same turn and have a crazy army. You basically psych rifted the board. Right. And here's the thing. You do this, Millicent is going to trigger twice, right? Because right. March of Souls is going to create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying, and so is Millicent's ability. So you're actually going to get twice as many, even if the board was equal, like we all had five creatures each, then we would all make five 1-1s, one, you're actually making 10, and then you can recast Millicent for white and the blue to just start that all over again. And then you have an army that can swing past other people. You have an army that's better. We've seen this with some of those like offering cards where it's like, hey, everyone, y'all get three 1-1s, one, one, I get nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it definitely works out in your favor big time, and uh, it does something secondary on top of our primary strategy. And a card that this that's this cheap, seventy nine cents, uh, yeah. that does something like that, you got to snap that up. Pretty good board wipe for sure. This next card is one hundred percent my favorite card in Magic at this point. It's really, Mirror Weave, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it's sixty nine cents, and I've had this card sitting around forever. Mm-hmm. Didn't know what to do with it. Mirror Weave is two, and then a hybrid white and blue. Uh, as two of is. each. Yep. So four CMC, uh, and it's an instant. Each other creature becomes a copy of target non-legendary creature until end of turn. Oh, I see. So this is kind of like the Brutaclad effect, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm more often casting this than Brutaclad. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. So what we're going to do is uh, on attack or something, we'll choose something that's much bigger than ah, all of okay. our spirits. Uh, and then our spirit army is something ginormous. As long as Ooh. there's anything out there that's usable. Uh, but there are a bunch of interesting... Um, Ways to use this as well, like I once had an opponent who was swinging out with a uh, few uh, big scary creatures in the air. Mm-hmm. And then my other opponent couldn't block that board, and one of those creatures was Metamine. Oh, so that, don't want that to keep hitting. So Manson was going to get an extra turn if that creature connected. So I cast Mirror Weave, targeting a Rhino. <laughs> And now everyone can block anything they want. Matt is not getting that effect. Uh, And this attack didn't involve me at all. Right. So I wiped Manson's board and Ashland's board essentially. Wow. Because they right they're gonna go. Well, I guess I will block and right. get rid of your Meta Mind because it's so powerful. That's really interesting. None of those effects triggered. And uh, yeah, this is a really creative card that you can get up to some interesting shenanigans with. Yeah, and I like this too. So let's say you have five one one whites flying creature tokens, and someone on the other end of the board just has like a random seven seven. Right. right? You swing with everything. They say I can't block. I don't have any flyers after blockers have been declared in this case no blockers have been declared mirror weave turn them all into seven sevens yeah <laughs> one shot them it's, right <laughs> it's so good like there are so many different ways to use this card yeah that's uh, exciting so that one's a lot of fun yeah i love that i love that you're able to use it also as a political tool and to get rid of someone else's board that's like a that was like a sex a six for one or something yeah if you ask me you put mirror weave into the deck suddenly mirror weave is the best card in the deck <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry move aside i'm mirror definitely entity. biased uh all right the next card is one of my personal favorite spirits of all time it is selfless spirit one in the white for a 2-1 flying spirit cleric sacrifice selfless spirit creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn this, this card is good in a whole bunch of decks it's good in non-spirit creature decks that's how you know it's so good that's it's a five dollar card as well because it just is super cheap one in the white you can play it early and it just sits there and stops so much from happening to you right uh it'll save your board if you're casting that big board wipe because we do run a lot of them right uh and if you're in a situation where you don't want something to bad to happen but even better triggers your commander when you act it that ability oh right because you sack it and then your commander sees it makes you a one one ah very nice yeah so uh, in the comments you have to loop me into how these triggers stack are we going to get that spirit by the time it becomes indestructible i think so creature comes out out trigger effect happens i think so i think so you get to choose the the order that the triggers happen uh i also really like this card because it reminds me of heroic intervention which is now that's an instant but it gives your green creatures permanence industry gives your creatures and permanence indestructible and that is so very important to save your board, especially in a creature-based strategy. So big fan of this edition here. Yeah, there's a lot in this deck that uh, is starting to feel kind of green. Yeah, kind of uh, green. And, and that's a good feeling for Azorius. It is It is indeed. Um, all right, the next up is one of my actual personal favorite cards, too. You put two on here, Jake. You really know. Oh, yeah. Spell Queller. 
This card is three dollars and fifty cents, which is unbelievable to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one a blue and a white, and it has flash and flying. It is a two three, and when Spellcaller enters enters the battlefield, exile target spell with converted mana cost four or less. And then when the Spellcaller leaves the battlefield, uh, its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. Okay, so this is kind of like a counter spell, but it's a soft counter spell, right? right. Um, and I actually like this quite a bit because it has flash. So right. this also will trigger for cards like. Donald that want you to cast extra spells and is it Donald? Yeah. It is Donald, right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So being able to cast like another card with Donald, this has flash on it. I like it quite a bit. Um, and you just get rid of a four mana spell, which is sometimes, by the way, a board wipe. Yeah, there's a lot of spells that we don't mind getting rid of, especially when you're playing against uh, one of our favorites, Josh Lee Kwai. <laughs> <laughs> like his mana curves are always super tight and low. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you're playing against really strong players, it's good against them especially yeah and oftentimes you'll find that like the wilderness reclamations whatever that card is at four mana just being able to stop it for a turn cycle is actually hugely beneficial it gives you that extra little bit of edge and again you're just trying to poke people out in the air so that means maybe one extra combat for you and that could be the difference between winning and losing the game and if there's anything that i've learned from the command zone podcast (laughs) it's that uh if you can double up in that slot for uh, things that this deck cares about. Mm-hmm. Like if we can crank that number from 36 to 37 right. while also cranking our single target removal at the same time, yep. that's even better. Yep, yep. So and, yeah, lots of great. effects that can do that here. Yeah, and we already saw that with March of Souls as well as a great board wipe in yeah. the additions. All right, the next card we have up here is Curiosity Crafter. I'm curious about this one because it's not a spirit. It's a bird wizard for three in the blue. It's a 3-3 three, three with flying and it says you have no maximum hand size. But more importantly, whenever a creature you whenever a creature token you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So coastal token piracy. Coastal token piracy. We're a little slim on that card draw, so this is a really mm-hmm. great way to uh, get more cards. And it's what we want to be doing anyways. Yeah. If you're going to be doing stuff anyways, find a way to capitalize on it. Yeah, I like that a lot. And it doesn't actually matter that this bird wizard is not a token or is not a spirit because it wants, it cares about creature tokens, which this deck is pumping out a ton of. And this is just an incredible way, right? Imagine you have five one one flyers. I keep using five. Let's say you have five one one flyer tokens. No one can block it. Swing them for five damage is one thing. Playing this four mana card and tr- swinging and then drawing four to five to six, however many cards you're hitting with, that is power. And it doesn't need to be something that your opponent sees coming either. Because mm-hmm. if I've got, say, uh, a board of 10 spirits, right. what's the worst that could happen on my turn? Uh, my One of my opponents takes 10 as an okay. opponent. Are you thinking, whatever, I might take 10 damage at the very worst? Yeah. You play Curiosity Crafter. Suddenly, that player is drawing 10 cards. They're a big problem. If there's not some instant speed removal held up, uh, that's something to be scared of. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, and extra Christmas land. Play Donald. Play Curiosity Crafter and draw 20 cards. <laughs> 20 cards. 20 cards. We can do more. Well, speaking of cards that let you draw close to 20 cards, this next one is the most expensive edition on the list, but by far, and now all of a sudden we've switched it again, this is probably the best card in the deck. It's worth it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Skull Clamp. It's eight bucks. It's a one mana artifact. Uh, it's an equipment. And a creep, equip creature gets plus one, minus one. And when it dies, you draw two cards, equip cost of one. Wow. So this means pay one mana, equip a, a spirit token. It dies instantly because it's yep. a 1-1 one, one, and you draw two cards. So, Or maybe you're equipping it to a spirit that's already done its thing or ah. a spirit that you plan on having it die this turn. Mm-hmm. And then we get in an additional value from Millicent. So we'll get a token. We'll get two cards. Equip this to that token that that thing made. This is just a, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this type yeah. of deck. The fact that it can cost one to equip too, that's the best part about this card. Right. And I always love telling the story, but they originally made this plus one minus one because <laughs> they thought it was going to make the card worse. Yeah whoops whoops big whoops this is uh by far one of the biggest sort of like design errors on on magic's part but it ends up creating just a fantastic card a in an everlasting staple for commander as well yeah it's been printed quite a few times and it's still around eight dollars and uh I think you might find one in your collection if you've been playing a little bit, mm-hmm, a little mm-hmm. while. This is the home for it. It's the home for it. Anytime you got a bunch of tokens, one one's running around. Next up, we got the Bident of Thassa. It's two blue blue for a legendary enchantment artifact. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. And then you can also pay one in blue and tap the Bident to say, creatures your opponents control attack this turn if able. 
I really like the addition of this card. Someone might be saying, hey, this is just like Curiosity Crafter. You know what? If I can get two Curiosity Crafters, I will do it. <laughs> yeah. This is also not caring about token creatures. And we already have Windborn Muse, Ghostly Prison in the deck. So the second effect on Biden Thassa actually does a lot of work. And you're a token deck too. You have so many chumps out. Yeah. So unless they're dealing a bunch of trample damage, we'll be able to handle whatever they do. We're just not a very attractive target right. for the this attack. Yeah, you always are going to have 1-1s, one and if you block with a spirit and it dies, Millicent makes you another 1-1, one one, so you kind of have this ongoing train of just endless chump blockers, which I like quite a bit. Yeah, solid card, and it's a really affordable card, too, mm -hmm. at $2.50. Yeah, and honestly, I wish I saw people play the second part of this card more often, because I love goading, and I love forcing right. other opponents to attack, and especially if you're an unattractive target, if you have a windborn, uh, seaborn, a windborn Muse out, then <laughs> no one's going to swing at you, so you're really kind of directing the rest of the table and forcing them to have blocks down if there's an opponent that has a bunch of flyers you know that they're the biggest threat to you force them to attack make them attack someone else or make them attack you chump a little bit and then kill them on the swing back yeah and uh, okay so the next one is perplexing test this is a 50 cent card what it's an instant uh three blue blue choose one uh return all creature tokens to their owner's hands or return all non-token creatures to their owner's hands Okay. So super flexible board wipe at instant speed. Instant speed and yeah. a mass bounce, which is obviously we all play Cyclonic Rift. We know how powerful that can be, but also not just that a one sided bounce. Right. And this is a 50 cent Cyclonic Rift. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of times the best part of Psych Rift is you're getting rid of uh, a whole bunch of creature tokens or stuff that's tokens, not going to yeah. come back. Right, right. Uh, so this one is very flexible and we get to keep our board if we really want to. Yeah, you can keep your tokens. If you have Millicent out, who cares? Bounce her back to your hand. Play her for a white and a blue the next time you, it's your turn because you're going to end step this probably. And you're, this might be sort of like the winning combo, right? You could do this and then your Biden of Thoughts is already out there and then maybe play your Mirror Entity and then blam. You're going to just swing out, murder someone on the next turn because everything's been bounced in their hands. And I've, as I've seen, you know, a lot of times token decks, they're making ground tokens. They're not necessarily creating a bunch right. of flyers. Right. So I like this a lot. Perplex test it's a very flexible card that rewards uh practice yeah so get reps and reps in to figure out when to do this yeah and don't sleep on this card for sure i think a lot of what we've been seeing with these new commander precons is that they're releasing so many and there are cards exclusive to the precons they kind of forget that they're even there this right. i think was the strixhaven one right and there have been so many cards this year obviously yeah that's kind of hard to keep track uh there's a lot of cards that we should not be missing this year. So yeah. skim yeah. the list if you haven't done it and you might find something cool like Perplexing Test. Yeah, and there's actually a couple of new cards in this pre-con that we're not going to talk about today. So make sure you check out the deck list for it so you can see, oh, cool. Wow, I've never seen that before. Guaranteed, you're going to find some cards in there that are going to make you blink twice. And this one, this is like a whammer in this, this deck. This is maybe one of my favorite old school spirits. Yeah, you want to you want to read it for us? Yeah, Jimmy? it's so Rogue good. Skull Reaver five, a blue and a white, the same mana value as Millicent, by the way, for a creature spirit three five with flying, double strike, and life link. And whenever you gain life, draw a card. An even more incentive for our opponents to never come at us, right? Because it has double strike. You just hang wow. it back, like you don't. If you really want to, you can swing out with this thing and then draw two cards. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh, but honestly cast this card, swing out with my tokens, pass the turn, come at me. I'm going to gain six life and draw two cards if you want to swing at me. And as a 3-5 in the air, it's going to block most things pretty darn well unless it's like some huge dragon. But even then, you may not be too sad throwing it away instead of taking, you know, 12 damage or whatever from a dragon attack. Yeah, and this thing's uh, pretty affordable too. $5.90. Uh, that's not that crazy, especially for something that's a classic. Yeah, it definitely is a classic indeed. From the original Innistrad as well. Right. Uh, or the original Innistrad sets. Uh, all right, and there's an honorable mention I wanted to put in here. It's a new card from Crimson Vow. It's called Mirror Hall Mimic. It's a double face card. It's three in the blue for a creature spirit. It's a zero zero. You may have Mirror Hall Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types. Holy moly. It's a clone for the spirit deck. That's pretty good. It's pretty darn good. And it also has Disturb for three blue blue, so you can cast it for that mana cost from your graveyard transformed. And it becomes Ghastly Mimicry, which is an enchantment aura. You can enchant a creature, and at the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of enchanted creature, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types. Oh, be still my heart. Be still my heart. There are so many things that we've talked about that are... Imagine doing this to Selfless Spirit. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. And, and then you constantly have indestructible. Imagine doing this to uh, what is it? Kami of False Hope, the oh. fog frog. Oh yeah. You're just never gonna hit me. Imagine ever. doing this to uh, uh, Curiosity Crafter. Ooh. Imagine doing this to any of your non-legendary spirits in the deck. And trust me, there are plenty. Yeah, just any creature token, like I said, gets me so hyped up. Yeah. I, I, don't sleep on tokens, people. <laughs> don't sleep on tokens, indeed. So those are the cards to add in. Skull Clamp, obviously being the most expensive out of all of them, but you still kept it completely under $30. And every single one of those cards, I could see making a big difference in Commander games, because you can just feel it sometimes. You and know? my list was like 20 cards. Yeah. I kept some cards on here to fill out that budget, budget to be honest, but there is so much that you can do to this deck with just cards that are under a buck yeah and definitely check it out online there are so many spirits decks that have been made over the years um i'm just glad that white blue has options outside of stasis and mm -hmm. stacks because uh, yeah. that's a bit tiring to play against. So I love seeing a token strategy, a combat strategy, a, a tribal spirit one. Yeah, this is a really fun uh, deck for white blue. Okay. All right. Now let's get to the difficult part of all of these episodes. What 10 cards shall we take out of the deck? This was very easy at first. And then when we started getting to seven, eight, nine, and 10, it was pretty <laughs> tough. I know. I do the thing where I'm like looking through the deck list over and over again, being like, right. should you? But me, uh, I don't know. I, like I just saw this card. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Is this really my third time through it? Yeah. All right. Uh, so the first one is Crush Contraband. It's three and a white. It's an instant. Choose one or both. Exile target artifact. Exile target enchantment. Okay. So this is single target removal for four white. It's an instant. You could potentially get rid of two things here, but this is kind of an awkward card i'm not yeah. gonna lie yeah it would really feel bad to have this in your hand and not be able to do something with it i'd prefer basically any of the 10 cards on our list yeah other than this card yeah yeah exactly and you know you're doing things that or you're bouncing other stuff you're getting rid of it in other ways you're maybe countering a spell quell or crush contraband seems like something on the other end of it and here's we're not gonna lie right it's important to get rid of some sometimes those singular important things but i don't think at four mana this is necessarily the exact kind of single target removal you're looking for yeah, the, the question you always got to ask is who's on the beatdown, right? Mm -hmm. And I think if you're not on the beatdown in this deck, you're making a mistake. Yeah, or you're just really far behind. But this deck right. has so many ways to get you back on that path. Right. I think you're kind of racing to the finish in the air anyway. The next card we're taking out is Custody Soulbinders. It's three and a white for a creature human cleric as a zero zero. Custody Soulbinders enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the number of other creatures on the battlefield. And then you can pay two and a white to remove a plus one plus one counter from Custody Soulbinder to create a one one white spirit creature token with flying. Okay. It's a pretty powerful ability, right? It but, is powerful, but two and a white for a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token. And I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty sure we talked about three or four other cards already that create those right. without needing to pay mana into it and have to cast this creature in the first place. And imagine you've got this early on, you've got nothing else to do in hand. Ooh. And this, you have to bring this out where there's, it's going to get, say, two counters. Right? right. So you only get two activations out of it. So even if you ignore the mana sync part of it, it's just an awkward card. Yeah. So it's also a cleric, a human cleric, so it doesn't have spirit synergy. Here's what happens. You pay three in the white. Let's say good case scenario. This becomes like a 7-7, seven, seven, okay? Right. That's pretty cool. Four mana is already paid into it. Now you need to pay another three mana to get a to end up with a 6-6 six, six and a 1-1 one, one flyer. So that is a total of seven mana for a 6-6 six, six on the ground that's not a spirit and then a 1-1 one, one flyer. And then to go past that, now you're going into 10 mana to make two 1-1 one, one flyers and have a 5-5. Five, five. 10 mana. That's a lot. If you're playing in a pre-con match, I could see this card doing work because, yeah. you know, pre-cons against each other might be cool. Uh, it's not the worst card in the world, but you have options. So Yep, yep, I agree there. Uh, the next card we have here is Disorder in the Court. This is a new card, actually. Very interesting. Uh, I think this card actually works better in some other decks, though. So let's read it. So it's X blue white and it's in an instant exile X target creatures, then investigate X times return the exiled cards to the battlefield under their owners control. And uh, at the beginning, beginning of the next end step. Right now, I love this card. It gives us a ton of uh, clue tokens. Yep. And it protects some pieces as well. Right. And it, it is like on the exact blink strategy of a lot of decks. Mm -hmm, this fits mm -hmm. in a lot of decks, but, uh, the main thing that I care about is that investigation. Very cool. Not in this deck, though. Yeah, this is interesting, too, because Disorder in the Court is great in a Barago deck. Oh, yeah. That's trying to flicker stuff that has Enter the Battlefield abilities attached to almost every one of those creatures. Is it that good in the deck that makes a bunch of spirit creature tokens? 
no, uh, that doesn't trigger our commander. There's a lot of things that don't happen. Uh, I suppose we could remove things for a turn on our opponent's side of the field. Right, you could flicker something else on the other side of the battlefield, but oftentimes I find that anytime you don't know, right, like... If you're just playing by yourself with your own deck, this card still needs to be good. It cannot be purely dependent on other players having, oh, they're making a ton of tokens, I'm going to get rid of them. Or, oh, I'm going to reset the the tokens on that, whatever, the plus and plus counters on that creature. You can't count on that. Right. So I think Disorder in the Court is a very interesting card. It's one that you should all keep an eye on, but probably for the decks that are more about enter the battlefield abilities, not necessarily making low spirit tokens that would just get eradicated by this thing. It's a very good example of a card that is good, but not in this deck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the next card we're going to take out is Custody Squire. This is a four and a white spirit cleric for a 3-3 flying with Will of the Council, for all of you conspiracy fans out there. When Custody Squire enters the battlefield, starting with you, each player votes for an artifact, creature, or enchantment card in your graveyard. Return each card with the most votes or tied for the most votes to your hand. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like giving control to my opponents, and I don't think that I'm going to be filling up the graveyard enough yeah. for this to work. And this is a five-mana card. Imagine yeah. drawing this and not having anything in your graveyard that you even want back. Like, uh. ideally, this is going to cost me more than my commander costs. Yeah. I don't think that that's worth it at five mana. We can do better things. Also, the will of the council part, you might be thinking, oh, you can get political with it. But oftentimes you play this man for five mana. You're like, okay, I'm going to choose this artifact. And then maybe someone else will choose that creature. No, right. everyone just votes for the thing you voted for and you get one card back. So How many times have those cool political deals actually panned out? Everybody just figures it out and does the boring thing. Yeah, I mean, and I don't blame them. And here's the thing. You may have a play group that's all about doing cool stuff like that. But, you know, I think we're building this deck so it can have the most fun on an average basis across right. the whole world. So, you know, what's the most fun is doing the thing that you want to do yes. more often absolutely that's fun okay all right so then dovin grand arbiter is the next one bye bye dovin bye dovin it's one white and a blue legendary planeswalker dovin uh it comes in with three loyalty plus one until end of turn whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player put a loyalty counter on dovin that's pretty good in this deck cool and a minus one create a one one uh, colorless stopter creature token with flying you gain one life okay and then the ultimate minus seven look at the top 10 cards of your library put three of them into your hand and the rest onto the bottom of your library in a random order this so, seems like it would be good in this deck right? kind of right you think that you might get that ultimate on that next turn mm -hmm. right probably not Probably not. Uh, <laughs> definitely that's the kind of thing where people look at you and go, mm, no thanks. Right. Um, also, you're making Thopters. You're not making Spirits. Um, I was hoping that said until end of turn whenever a creature you control deals combat damage, you can draw a card. Yeah, wouldn't that be something? It would be something. That's and why we play cards that say that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Dovin does not say that. Dovin is a planeswalker that cares about artifacts and artifact synergies more than anything else. You can sort of see this card like having like 30 to 40 to 50 percent ties to what this deck is doing right but it's not that full synergy that i think you're looking for and even though the dream is cool at right, play dovin plus one it swing with six creatures to get to a or no sorry swing with at least three creatures that connect to get to a minus seven ability the next turn everyone's going to stop you from doing it or point at it because an ultimating planeswalker even if it's not a crazy ultimate is still powerful right the, no matter what the ultimate is they're going to say he can ult that thing next turn yeah i'm not letting jake do this uh and this ultimate, honestly, as far as ultimates go, is not great. Not great. And honestly, just play Curiosity Crafter, yeah. a card that Jake recommended, and then when those creatures deal combat damage, you just draw the cards. Right. You don't need to worry. You don't need to have this card selection. You know, And the card selection is nice, but you're, the chances of you doing both of those things, right? Like, you have to think, Commander, about... Like, when I do something, what's the percentage chance I get to do the next thing that I'm planning with this? And when it comes to Planeswalkers and ultimate abilities, your chances dip drastically the moment people see it happening. Right. Next up, we have Hallowed Spirit Keeper. One white, white for a creature avatar, 3 2 with vigilance. When Hallowed Spirit Keeper dies, create X 1 1 white spirit creature tokens with flying, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Now, this is one of the cards that had a lot of value when, you, when we talked about the cards that have reprint value. Yeah. But uh, what if you have nothing in your graveyard? Or what if it doesn't die? What if you don't have a, a sack outlet? Time. You don't have many sack outlets. Hmm. Interesting. It's a pretty silly thing to cast this card. Nothing happens, and you just have a three-two vigilance. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't feel good. And if it was like, hey, I'm swinging at you, Jimmy. You have a perfect four-four. You can block it with. I'd go. Nah, you can just hit me for three. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think that this card uh, is probably something you might want to cast in the late game. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this deck in particular, if we're not hitting a spirit every single turn, uh, that's not what we want to do. Yeah, and this is a similar argument that for Dovin, which is you need to play this and then you need to do something else to make it happen. In this case, two things. You need to have creature cards in your graveyard and a way to get this dead. So that's a lot of work when you already have so many other token creators in the deck. It feels a little redundant. Yeah, it'll be busted elsewhere, but yeah, not here. For sure. All right, next one is Oyobi, who split the heavens split it's them. six and a white uh legendary creature spirit it's a three six flying whenever you cast a spirit or arcane spell create a three three white spirit creature token with flying oh that ability is crazy good it is pretty good and there's like we said around 30 plus cards in the deck that have spirit synergies but you know what it better be good for six and a white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it better be real good. Yeah, I'm busy that day for six and a white. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing too. When you cast this for six and a white, that very well may be the only thing you're doing that turn. Right. It's not like this card has flash. It's not like you can cheat it out in this deck. So yeah, but that would be sick. It, yeah, it would be pretty, pretty cool. You can't, you can't, unfortunately. And here's the thing. I, I think this is uh, an easy trap for a lot of players to fall into, which is, is a 3-3 three, three flyer that much better than 3-1-1 one, one flyers? Mm. And for 7 mana, you most likely are going to be able to generate those 3-1-1 one, one flyers some other ways. And we've talked about this, right? You're attacking, you need to maybe hold some creatures back occasionally for blocking. Having a 3-3 three, three makes it a little harder. I would rather have 3 one ones because this deck wants to have tokens. There's cards that synergize with having multiple tokens, not just one. Right. So Oyobi looks really good on the surface, but is a little bit of a trap. Yeah, definitely. It's a trap. It's one of those things that you'll look at and you'll say, wow, this card is crazy in this deck, but you got to keep reading. Yeah, you got to keep reading. And then most importantly, sometimes you just need to play with it to understand how kind of clunky it is. And, you know, maybe back in the early days when we first started playing Magic and uh, Commander, something like Obi would stick around and it would work. And then you'd make cool. Oh, sweet. You just made two three threes on your next turn, but it cost you six and a white and two creatures. So that's like, what, 11 mana. And by the time you're able to cast that in this deck in particular, uh, you should probably be up to bigger things than yeah. creating more spirits. Yeah. And not to mention the spirits you create, they don't have haste. You're in white and blue. You have to wait a whole turn cycle for them to swing again. So there's just a lot of clunkiness involved yeah. here. Too many steps and it's very readable. You know, I think you rather just have a big army you can send the damage more ways and sort of pilot the deck and try and win in that way right uh next up is midnight clock this is two in the blue for an artifact you can tap it to add blue mana or you can pay two in the blue to put an hour counter on midnight clock at the beginning of each upkeep put an hour counter on midnight clock and then when the 12th hour counter is put on midnight clock shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library then draw seven cards and exile midnight clock I feel like I see this trigger a lot on Arena. Like, I feel like it does work in historic brawl games on Arena just fine. Yeah. I've never seen it in real life. Yeah, even though it's each upkeep, right? And you have four players around the table. That means 12 upkeep, so three turn cycles. This is, at its core, you should be looking at it as a three mana mana rock. Right. And we've seen that we actually have a bunch of mana rocks in here. But if you also look at the deck breakdown, you have a lot of spells that cost three mana value. So I think you really don't want to prioritize putting in a bunch of artifacts that tap on that end of it, right? And so, let's say that this didn't have the uh, last bit of text there. You're paying three mana for an artifact that, yes, produces colored mana, but you know what else does that? Like a lot. A, a lot. Manolith, a Dark yeah. Feeling Git. Right, right. And, and all both three of those mana. are pretty, like, you know, not that great nowadays. Yeah, I could also see you going into the deck and finding another three CMC artifact and being like, you know, I don't need this one. I want the Midnight Clock instead. But overall, this is definitely on the lower end of power level of cards in this deck. Right. All right, next one is Haunting Imitation. New card. Uh, is it Imitation? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's two and a blue. It's a sorcery. Each player reveals the top card of their library. For each creature card revealed this way, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 1-1. One, one. It's a spirit in addition to its other types, and it has flying. If no creature cards were revealed this way, return Haunting Imitation to its owner's hand. So if you don't get any hits, kind of cool that it will come back to your hand. You get to cast it again for three mana and hope you hit something. <laughs> this is one of those cards that I might put into a deck if I'm trying to power it down for a specific type of play group. Ah, okay. To, it's a really fun card. Yeah. But it, this it, is it, not a good card. Well, here's the thing too. A lot of decks will just have like a, a Sakura Tribe Elder at right. the top it's like congratulations for three mana you made a sacred tribe which actually maybe isn't the worst thing in a white and blue deck but there are a lot of cases where you'll just have everyone flip and i play again i play a paco holland deck right and it's all about flipping non-creatures off the top of everyone's library mm -hmm. 
on average, I'm getting between two to four non-creature spells, and very rarely am I getting a creature spell that I'm like, oh my gosh, that thing is so powerful. Because you'll find in more and more commander groups, CMC is getting lower. Creatures aren't going to be those sort of like crazy Phyrexian dreadnought type things, those huge monsters. Sometimes that you they copy. will be. Sometimes they will but be. We're not here to talk about those times that they will be. Like you know, you can't outweigh all the times that you pay three mana, nothing happens. This goes back to your hand, or you pay three mana, you get a Land of War Elves or a Sakura Tribe Belvedere or something kind of lame for three mana. Yeah. Uh, we can't talk about just the exciting moments because yeah, those will happen. Uh, but don't throw those in my face when I say it's a bad card. Yeah. Now I might actually play <laughs> this in my Paco and Haldan deck because that deck wants yeah. to put cards on top of my opponent's libraries. So in that case, I get a little more options, right? I can be like, cool, I'm going to totally lost that card on end step. And then I'm going to cast Haunting Imitation and get it off the top of your deck. But this deck doesn't have any synergies in that world. So this is more just cute because it makes a spirit. But a lot of times, if you whiff or you only hit some small things, or even if you hit something big, it's just too inconsistent, I think, in a deck that has a really specific game plan. I could really see myself playing it. Uh, like I said, I love weird creature tokens and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I could see myself playing it, but not uh, as a way to upgrade this deck. Yeah, that's, trying to that's upgrade a great way to make it. it better. Yep. And the last card is Verity Circle. It's two in the blue for an enchantment. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it isn't being declared as an attacker, you may draw a card. And then for four in the blue, you can tap target creature without flying. Hmm. So five mana tap creature without flying to then draw a card. That's a lot. That's almost your entire turn. Um, and anytime another creature is tapped, but not for attacking, you draw a card as well. We've seen this actually with the partner pairing uh, in this deck. They are they kind of want to do something around that. But this is the only card in the deck that has that sort of synergy. And it doesn't seem like you're going to be wanting to do this in the spirit-focused attack strategy. It feels bad to cut any card that says draw a card mm -hmm. in this deck. But this one in particular, yeah, there are some situations where you could pay three for the enchantment, maybe get the card off of it, pay the extra five to ensure that you're going to get a card and tap a creature. But eight mana is not great. It, it's actually bad. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. But if your whole deck is about tappers and tapping right. things to tap other stuff down, then yeah, go for it. Verity Circle seems really fun. And that might be a blue and white or even a green, blue, and white deck that is in the future that is sort of getting the pieces now, but this deck isn't the place for it. So. Yeah, when you start building that commander deck with those two partners, there's probably a lot that you're going to take in and out. Definitely leave in Verity Circle if you're running those two commanders. Yep. Okay, so that is it for the cards in and the cards out. Uh, this one, I think, was a really nice and like clean swap in and out. Yeah. The, the strategy's already there. It's just sort of about refining it. So let's talk a little bit about how the deck plays. Um, I think this is just pretty straightforward, right? For sure. The commander tells you exactly what to do, mm -hmm. but it's got enough interaction to kind of keep things interesting. Like, this isn't like Prime Speaker Vanifar, where it's the same thing every time. Mm -hmm. You're going to be... Uh, doing a different thing to different sub different opponents every single time, even if your deck plays the same way. Yep, yep. You're going to make a bunch of 1-1s. One you're going to refill your hand with like your reconnaissance missions and your distant melodies. And you're just going to try and hit everyone a bunch of time with a bunch of 1-1s one that they probably can't block. And probably be surprised by how many times you can cast this commander. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think that's going to be the most interesting thing with this deck. I'd love to see if anyone out there gets this pre-con, starts playing with it, and just was like, hey, I cast Millicent five times this game, and I never had to pay more than four mana or whatever each time. That's pretty right. exciting. Okay, well, that's going to do it. That's going to wrap it up for the Spirit Squadron deck. Of course, to the listeners, what do you think about the Azorius deck this time around? What do you think about this White Blue Flyers Spirits idea? Are there any cards that we missed that are an absolute include? Again, keep in mind that we had to keep the budget under $30, so we're not just throwing in Rhystic Studies left and right. And are there any cards that you disagree with that we took out? Or cards that you agree with that we took out or that we put in? Let us know in the comments. You can post right below this video. You can tweet at us. You can find Jake Boss on Twitter as well. And you can tell us your thoughts on the Spirit Squadron. Yeah, let me know exactly how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous I'm, words, Jake. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm down to have a conversation for sure. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Real discourse about magic cards. That's why I joined the internet, everyone. <laughs> and of course, if you're looking to pick up this pre-con or the cards to upgrade it or the cards to upgrade any of your decks, you want to pick up some cool new singles from Midnight Hunt or Crimson Vow, head on over to our sponsor, channelfireball.com slash command. You can just type that in. You're on the website. It'll have the code inputted. Or you can wait until checkout and just type the code command there as well. Either Either way you're supporting the show that you're watching right now extra turns game nights jake i know for sure works so so very hard making game nights into the reality that it is and boy oh boy your support yeah. really does matter it's why we're able to do this why we're able to bring on new people it changed a lot of our lives like 
yeah. I moved down here for this job from yeah. the broadcast job. This is, uh, that was a big change. And I'm so happy that we're doing this more and more with yeah. new hires and stuff. And I'm happy, so glad that you're here with us as well, because that means more content and especially more content for everyone out there watching. So again, channelfireball.com slash command that is our sponsor for the show. Using that link directly supports the content we make as does supporting our content through Ultra Pro. Of course, the play mats you see in front of us, Ooh. the ones we use on game nights that we reveal every single time, the dice, the deck boxes, the sleeves are all made by Ultra Pro. They are the leaders in the business because they've been doing it for the longest. They've got the best supply chain. They've got the best quality for everything that they make and they get the official magic yeah, art. The beautiful magic art. There's always something in the set uh, that I'm so excited about, like Prismari Command. That mm -hmm. playmat looks so good. Oh, yeah. I just still think about that animation you all made for Game Nights for that. Dude, Sam killed it on that one. It's so That great. was the Sam special. I had nothing to do with it. I'm like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> you pointed the finger and said, make it so, Sam. Uh, pretty much. Just make it cool. And I yeah. walked out the room. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you get the official art on the playmat. So again, supporting Ultra Pro supports our show. Uh, do we have an end step today? Something cool outside the world of Magic? We sure do. Oh, I my gosh. I want to talk about uh, one of my favorite things lately, which is the Digimon TCG. Digimon, Digital Monsters. Can't yeah, go this anywhere is without somebody new. singing in this song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it, no, this, the game has been going in Japan for a while now. Okay. And they brought it over to the US. And something interesting about that is the meta is basically solved in Japan. Oh. And we're getting those sets one by one now. So we get to learn from uh, their legacy. Cool, the Japanese legacy. pros. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So this game is super cool. The mana system is uh, basically you start at zero mm -hmm. and I'll spend two. Now you have two to spend for free, but let's say you want to spend five. Mm -hmm. Then it crosses zero, goes back to three. Oh. So now I have three to spend. And let's say I'm going to cast something for 12. That gives you nine mana to spend for free. Wow. Okay. This game is so dope because nobody ever says pass the turn. When you right. cross zero, it immediately becomes your opponent's turn. Oh. And when you digivolve a card onto another card, you're drawing a card. Mm -hmm. So your hand replaces itself throughout this game. It's really fun. I've been getting into it big time with my friends. That's cool. And uh, the game just sings. I think Prof has a video coming out oh, pretty great. soon about this. That's but. really cool. I love that idea that you're passing the resources back and forth almost. Right. So if you want to do something big, well, your opponent's also going to get the chance to do something big. Right. Instead of kind of setting up our engine like we're used to with Magic and mm -hmm. counting on everybody to uh, kind of be responsible with how they built their deck. Mm -hmm. It's like, sure, I'll drop an Omnimon, uh, but you'll get to do something even crazier on your <laughs> turn. But honestly, my favorite part is the little smiles on the Aww. cards. It's a happy little game <laughs> where it's nice, nostalgic, <laughs> and fun. If that was something that you enjoyed in your childhood uh, or if you you just enjoy new TCGs, uh, give Digimon a try for sure. That's awesome. I do want to try it out now. I didn't know that's how the format works. And that's really exciting. I Recons like... are 13 bucks. Wow. And yeah. I guess a lot of it is also how much you know about the other opponent's deck, right? Oh, yeah. I shouldn't give them five mana because they're just going to do this potentially. Oh, yeah. If, if I give them this much, then they're going to start their Lilith loop and, you know, mm. because the Japanese folks uh, solved it all for us. That's but, great. Yeah, those I precons love... are solid and they're $13, so... I love that. If you're Let looking for a new game, and especially if you're like a dad or a family member or a mom that you want to have it with your kids, that, that seems like a perfect game to sort of get them started with the TCGs. It feels like Magic as Garfield intended because you buy a booster pack and you buy a starter deck and you shuffle them up and you bring the good cards here and there. Like a new TCG always has that feeling yeah. of uh, an organic experience. Whereas, you know, with Magic, we're used to going out and picking up precisely what we it. like. Yeah, exactly. All right, very cool. So check out the Digiman TCG and Prof's video on it soon enough. Someday soon. Someday soon. All right, big thanks to our team here at the Command Zone. Arthur Mellicroft, Lady Danger, Lance and Lung, Craig Blanchett, Ashlyn Rose, Alfred the Socket, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, hey. right next to me, Patrick Nan, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Walder, Gaurav Goliath, Truck Ty, Jamie Block, Damon Lenz, Shauna Gillis, and Evan Limberger. And I'm <gasps> Evan, he's he's amazing. He's one of our new VFX. Guys. He is one it. of our new. Yeah, we. Uh, that means better VFX on Game Nest for you. We've got new editors as well for our ads, for our oh, yeah. podcasts and writers. We got so many better things coming your way, and that means we get to feature more of our uh, awesome staff here on camera doing podcasts. Uh, I'm sure you all, a lot of people really like the, uh, the... Actually, that was your idea for a podcast episode. Yeah. Decks we built but hated. Yeah, I love stuff like that. And I'm sure uh, we're going to be doing something like that in the future here. Uh, I'm going to try to crank out some ideas and see what we yeah, got. You know, I go back it. and stir that it. pot. Because Josh and I, we're kind of running out of ideas after seven <laughs> years. <laughs> well, I learned from the best. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks. Appreciate it. And of course, big thanks to Jeffrey Palmer. He does the Living Cards animations, including this one behind us, The Days. And Ooh. you can find him on Twitter at Living Cards MTG. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jake, for the excellent breakdown. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. It's always a pleasure. We'll see you next time. Toss it. Peace. Bow, 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 bow. Thank you for your attention. 
For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>